All right, guys, fishing another Bartow Ford tournament out of Kissimmee. I'm gonna see if we can't go back to back on these. We won the last one with 26 pounds. I haven't been out here since the last Bartow, but Casey's been out here twice and he had two really good bags, 23 in the first tournament he fished and then almost 29 in the latest one. So we're gonna see if we can't catch another big bag today for the Bartow, take home another win, uh, at least have a good finish. We're pretty high up in the points, so another good finish will keep us up there. We got out here for about two hours uh, in the afternoon yesterday, caught an eight pounder and a few other small fish. So we're gonna see what we can't do out here. Stay tuned guys. Was it a good one? I don't know. I didn't see it. I got it. Three pound, dude. Was it a good one? Is your hook good? <laughs> Uh -oh. That might be like a four pounder. Nah, it's not big. <laughs> not even a three pounder. God, he blew up on it, baby, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, ready? Same spot. <laughs> it's a little better one. It's the same exact size. <laughs> Maybe even smaller. <laughs> it's smaller. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't run in.
big? side of the yeah Probably five. I saw your line get tight. <laughs> Might be a good one. I think it's a good one. Nah. Why is he fighting so good? Somewhere. How big is that? I don't know. Not that big. <laughs> Let's see. He's like four and a half. <laughs> the weight was all the way in his throat. <laughs> Five and a quarter. Two seventy something. Yeah. Our smallest one's two eighty right now. Two seventy. We have twenty point six one. Okay. 
bitch. Is it? Are you sure? Pretty sure. No, oh. it is it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. It there came up. It came up weird. <laughs> now we got a bad. <laughs> six pounder, yeah. <laughs> it came up and it was so dark. I was like, that's a mug. <laughs> you barely have a mug too, or? <laughs> I was ready to let him come off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was a mud fish. That's why I... It came out like a bass, but it looked like a mud fish. That might be closer to seven. Six and a half. A little over six and a half. Twenty-four pounds. Twenty-four. Oh, we're one fish away from winning it again. <laughs> Four. I'm just gonna put him on this side. Okay. That's the year I was born. Christian Greco. What's up? You got Hello, 20, man. brother? Yeah. All right, let me tell you this young man coming right here fishes all over the United Set States. Down, right Our here, tournament man. here last month, I handed him $5,000 nah, nah. to win. Nothing he says he's got right. another big sack of fish. He wants that five thousand dollars. He needs some motor money. Five fish, five alive. Five fish, five alive. He only needs twenty-seven pounds. To take over the lead, Christian Greco. You've only got second place, twenty-five forty-five. Good job, son. Yes. Let me tell you about Christian. Check out Christian Greco fishing on YouTube. Sometime within the next week, go. he's going to do a YouTube video oh. on how he caught all those fish today. He's doing an awesome oh, job. He is in second place. <laughs> He's even trying to get him back in that side. That's worth a couple of grand right there. Him and Casey Marks are hungry. All right, guys. So we finished up in fifth place for this tournament. Pretty much one big bite short of taking home the win. It took 30, it was either 30 or 31 pounds for first place. Uh, I think we ended up with 25 something. So just one big bite away. Uh, but we had a great day out there on the water. Another good day on the Kissimmee chain. And uh, took home a paycheck. So... I had some guys on the last video, some of you guys uh, commenting, asking about my setups, uh, what kind of baits, rods, and stuff like that. Uh, so to end off this video, I'm going to go over the two main setups um, that we caught them on in this Kissimmee video that you guys just watched, and then my latest video uh, where we won the Bartow Ford tournament with 26 pounds, and that was last month, and uh, pretty much caught them the exact same way both times. Uh, this tournament we caught them more punching and the last tournament we caught them more on a chatterbait but those were basically the two main combos were the chatterbait and the punching rod and uh, that's how we caught them so just gonna quickly go over my setups for those two uh, how I have them rigged all that kind of stuff and then probably here pretty soon I'm gonna put together a more, more comprehensive uh, video on a, a variety of the setups pretty much like my top Florida style rods uh, what I would have set up on the boat, but we'll go over these two rods the punching rod and the chatterbait rod uh, I'll start off with the chatterbait setup. Uh, I throw it on a 7-4 medium heavy favorite big sexy uh, I've been working with favorite. This is my second year now with favorite. Uh, they make great rods I've been really happy with all the rods I've gotten from them and uh, this one in particular is one of my favorite rods the big sexy series and uh, the 7.4 Heavy, it's got a really long handle on it, which I really like for ripping through the grass here in Florida. Uh, I use a half ounce chatterbait, but uh, this combo rips it out of grass really well. Uh, I put, I tuck this up under my arm here, so when I'm reeling and get through grass, I can just rip it with my whole body, and that rips it just straight out of that hydrilla, eel grass, whatever kind of grass that I'm fishing, and uh, that's what triggers a lot of the bites. But that is a half ounce jackhammer chatterbait, just standard black and blue. Sometimes I throw Bama bug as well. Uh, I don't think it really matters as long as it's something that's dark in that water. They're mainly targeting bluegill, I think, so that's why I'm using that black and blue. And then I've got a full size missile baits D bomb on there, and uh, just kind of completes that bluegill pattern. And uh, that's that's been one of my top baits for chatterbait right there. Kind of been a secret, but. You guys have seen me throw it, so I'm going to let it out there. That's a D-bomb. Probably one of the best chatterbait trailers down here in Florida. And, uh, yep, there you go. That's the secret on that. And uh, I cut a little bit off the head there, uh, thread it on there, and then put some super glue. And that guy will pretty much last you until one of the tails or something comes off. So don't really go through too many of those if you rig it up the right way with the super glue and everything. 
And uh, that's, the, that's the jackhammer setup right there. Throw it on 20 pound Seaguar Red Label line. Uh, throwing it through thick grass and stuff, so I wouldn't really throw it on anything less than 20. You're just going to get broken off. So, and you can cast the 20 just fine. Won't break you off if they get all wadded up in the hydrilla. I mean, I've put a lot of pressure on those fish on this 20 pound and I've, I've never broken it. So 20 pound fluorocarbon, Seaguar Red Label, get a bulk spool. I buy the thousand yard spools and uh, it's not too expensive. So that's what I go with on the line. And then I throw it on a seven to one Shimano reel. This is the Cronarch. I really like these Cronarch reels for pretty much every application. This is been one of my favorite reels for sure and uh throw the seven to one whenever i'm in shallower grass just so i can crank it faster uh just get it through that hydrilla and a lot of times when they hit that chatter bait they're running straight at you with it so with that seven to one you can catch up a little bit better on them versus like a six to one uh the six to one i would throw like offshore hydrilla if i'm fishing more like 10 foot of water just to keep that bait down but we're only fishing in like three or four foot of water in this hydrilla that you guys have seen in this video in the previous so that 7-1 is what I use to get the job done. So that's the chatterbait setup. Uh, pretty simple, but little little keys in there that, that just help everything run smoothly and get more fish in the boat. I do lock my drag down also on that. Um, I don't want them pulling any kind of drag when you have them locked in the hydrilla like that. If they get around the boat and they're kind of running around, I'll thumb the spool a little bit, but lock the drag down on that for sure and uh, just kind of play them out if you need to. But there's the chatterbait setup. Move on to the punching setup now. Uh, my punching setup is actually a custom built rod. This is a 7.9 extra heavy. Uh, favorite has some extra heavy rods, uh, but nothing that I personally like for flipping these heavy mats in Florida right now. Uh, if you guys stay tuned at iCast this year, uh, they've been working on some stuff. So I think you're gonna see a really nice punching rod coming out of favorite here at iCast in July. Uh, but for the meantime, this is what I've been using, a 7.9 extra heavy custom built rod. Uh, just had it built to my specifications, big long handle on it as well. Uh, if you guys can tell, I like the long handle on the rods. I really like to get that under my arm when I set the hook. It just gives me more leverage on these fish and uh, just my personal preference when I'm fishing most of these techniques. But uh, throwing that on a ounce and three quarter tungsten, so a little bit heavier than an ounce and a half, just so you don't have to mess with shaking it through the mat quite as often, and it helps whenever whenever you're in windy conditions. So that's usually my go-to is the ounce and three quarter. Uh, if the mats are a little bit thicker or there's like really heavy 20 plus mile an hour winds, I will go to the two ounce. Or if they're just kind of lighter mats, then I'll go with the ounce and a half. Uh, but that ounce and three quarter is really nice right in between and uh, pretty much will get through almost anything. Uh, as far as the flipping hook, I've been playing around for years now uh, with the flipping hooks, and I can't recommend one overall flipping hook to you guys at the moment. Uh, that might be something I do a video on, a few of the different flipping hooks I use. Uh, but for punching, I use the owner jungle hook, either 3 aught or a 4 aught, uh, depending on the bait. Uh, this is a Menace, just a regular size striking Menace grub, black blue. Uh, it's pretty much all you guys have seen me flip on the channel, flip and punch with. Uh, just gets through the mat really nice. And uh, I have some good and bad about this hook. I have bent some out, I have snapped some. The tips do roll, uh, but they're super sharp, like extremely sharp. Uh, so in those mats, sometimes when they're not getting, getting the bait good or you, you don't have, like it's not as solid of a hook set as if you were just flipping straight up through pads or reeds and stuff. Uh, so I just like using that owner jungle hook on there and I'm willing to take the risk uh, I, I feel like the hookup ratio is better on that hook for punching. So, uh, yeah, I'm still playing around with the with the punching and flipping hooks, but that's what I'm using right now. And uh, it might change here. It might change here soon as I play around with stuff. But that's what I'm using for now. And then got another Cronarch on here. This is the XG 8 to 1. And then 80 pound suffix 832. Uh, you can get away with 65. I just like 80 on the punching setup since you're flipping really thick stuff. Not so much that I'm gonna break off a fish uh, with the 80 pound, but whenever you get stuck in the mat and you're in reeds and hyacinth and all that, kind of just pull it out without losing a $12 weight every other flip that you get stuck. So that's why I go with the 80 pound on that and the diameter difference isn't, isn't anything to make much of a difference. So just go with the 80 pound on that. All right, so those are the two setups that have been getting the job done here lately. And uh, anytime I'm throwing a chatterbait or a punching rig down here in Florida, 
those are going to be my setups right there for the time being. Uh, in this thick, heavy grass, the hydrilla, the hyacinth mats, all that kind of stuff. Moving up north, I'll probably uh, lighten it up a little bit. But for down here in Florida, for what I fish, for my preferences, that's what it is right there. So for all you guys asking questions, that's the full setup on both of those combos. Pretty much just gave you guys everything I do right there. Uh, another thing I do also that you guys have seen in some of my videos, uh, spray some fish bomb, which is an attractant. Uh, I'll spray that on the soft plastic baits a lot, especially punching and flipping. Uh, you guys saw in my Harris Toyota video, that was a big key for me, I think, uh, spraying that down. I use the garlic scent most of the time down here in Florida. And uh, just something to help if it gets you one or two more bites throughout the day. Uh, then why not, you know? It's got UV in it, and uh, it's got the garlic scent and everything. I just think it makes them hold on a little bit longer, get a better hook set in for them. So those are my setups right there, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment. I'll try to get back to you and, uh, and let you know if you have any more questions regarding those setups or any other setups. Like I said, I'll probably go ahead and do a more comprehensive video on a few other setups that I use just because I get a lot of questions on, on setups, on baits, on line, reels, all that kind of stuff. So I'll just go ahead and put out a video on like my top six or eight combos that I would have laying on the deck in a typical Florida Florida event, Florida fishing just in general. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And if you have any specific questions, just uh, let me know in the comments. I can go over them in the video or I'll just respond to you in the comment section. But I uh, appreciate you guys hanging with me for this long. If you guys have made it to this point of the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and we'll see you at the next one.